Natural gas is emerging as a major motor vehicle fuel. It's clean burning, cost effective, and the supply is abundant, especially in North America. And there is a new aluminum composite reinforced cylinder that is lightweight, corrosion resistant, and allows the natural gas industry to offer a truly practical alternative fuel for motor vehicles. The dramatic tests you are about to see answer questions about the safety of this fuel system and the strength of the aluminum cylinder. The U.S. Department of Transportation and the Canadian Transport Commission have stringent testing guidelines and performance criteria which new alternative fuel systems must meet. The new composite reinforced aluminum cylinder has been manufactured in full compliance with DOT and CTC regulations. And the following tests demonstrate performance over and above the requirements of DOT and CTC. CNG Cylinder Corporation, manufacturer of this new cylinder, conducted these tests under the supervision of Authorized Testing Incorporated, an independent disinterested inspection agency approved by DOT and CTC. There is a persisting misimpression that a vehicle using compressed natural gas would be hazardous in the event of a collision. The following series of tests, however, demonstrate that vehicles fitted with the new CNG fuel cylinders can withstand substantial collisions without creating serious hazards. Dropped from 30 feet, this 1966 Pontiac was moving at approximately 30 miles per hour at the point of impact. That is the maximum speed at which new car makers are required to test the integrity of conventional gasoline tanks. The CNG cylinder, pressurized to a standard 3,000 PSI and mounted in the trunk of the car, withstood the rear-end crash with no meaningful damage or dislocation. Fuel lines to the engine were kinked, but showed no damage. Subsequently, the same cylinder withstood pressurization to 7,500 PSI, the minimum burst pressure required by federal and Canadian government authorities, showing that the tank had maintained its integral strength despite the crash. In each of these tests, the natural gas cylinders were fitted with standard CNG Cylinder Corporation brackets, mounted in the usual trunk position, and pressurized to the standard 3,000 PSI. At 50 feet, this Ford Maverick impacts at 39 miles per hour. The car's rear end collapses against the solid floor, substantially wrecked. But again, the CNG cylinder remained intact and undamaged. At 70 feet, this 1973 Oldsmobile has accelerated to approximately 46 miles per hour at impact. The momentum of the engine mass actually increases the severity of the crash. Yet there was no damage to the cylinder or any indication of movement. It stayed securely locked in its brackets. The valve and pressure relief device on the cylinder remained intact and functional. At 90 feet, this 1973 Mercury Marquis is traveling at approximately 52 miles an hour at the time of impact. As in most of these tests, the gas tank is clearly destroyed by the crash. The engine is torn loose from its mounts and the frame bends. Yet ironically, the two CNG cylinders, 10 and 13 inches in diameter, actually absorbed and distributed a portion of the energy of impact. At the same time, they survived the crash intact and were still functional. Note that even if these new CNG fuel tanks had allowed the escape of gas, there would have been no pooling of a flammable fuel near the wreckage. Unlike propane or gasoline, natural gas is lighter than air and vents off into the atmosphere. But what if a fire occurs? How would these new CNG fuel tanks perform? The answer comes in the next series of tests required by the U.S. Department of Transportation and Canadian Transport Commission. The fuel tanks, made by the CNG Cylinder Corporation, bring an exclusive double redundant safety design to this high temperature situation. The aluminum itself has a melting point of 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, while the composite reinforcement that doubles the strength of the cylinder against internal bursting maintains a usable tensile strength to about the same temperature. While the heat is concentrated at the bottom of the cylinder, the high thermal conductivity of aluminum distributes the heat quickly. And although aluminum anneals at high temperatures, cylinders subjected to these bonfire tests 
withstood hydrostatic burst tests above a minimum burst pressure of 7,500 PSI. The pressure relief device vents at this point. Amazingly, the natural gas does not ignite, even though a rubber gasket on the bracket mount does catch fire. The ignition temperature of natural gas is 600 degrees higher than that of gasoline. The half-full fuel tank is a special problem solved by the CNG Cylinder Corporation's double redundant safety design. The burst threshold at half-full changes, creating the need for heat sensitive as well as pressure release valves. These valves operate at 3,775 PSI at a temperature of 212 degrees. As is seen here, the new CNG cylinders survive the test without the possibility of bursting and the gas itself never ignites. How would these new cylinders perform, not under extreme heat, but under tremendous explosive force? The next set of tests answers this question. As a reference point, here's what one half stick of dynamite does to a 24 inch diameter granite boulder in slow motion. Clear the area! Make way for the blast! Burn the hole! Almost 350,000 foot-pounds of energy fragment the boulder in all directions. And this points to another advantage of aluminum. Even when aluminum does give way to such force, it is not as likely to fragment as this boulder or steel could. The first three tests you'll see were performed at ambient temperature. One quarter of a stick of dynamite will generate approximately 175,000 foot-pounds of energy. The dent created was approximately 13 thousandths of an inch into the metal, equivalent to the thickness of about five sheets of paper. The one-half stick dynamite produces approximately 350,000 foot-pounds of energy, with the equivalent of a car impacting into a wall at 40 miles an hour. Calculations were done by a major car maker. The dent developed from a one-half stick of dynamite was less than one sixteenth of an inch, there was no damage after cylinders were exposed to dynamite. A number of them have been subjected to hydrostatic burst tests. In both the one-quarter stick and one-half stick tests, the cylinder exceeded 5,000 PSI, which is the test pressure of the container. And last of all, a full stick. This is energy equivalent to a car impacting a wall at approximately 89 miles an hour. <laughs> It is particularly noteworthy in this test that while there is gas venting, it is venting through the valve and relief device. The blue arrow above the cylinder marks the spot where the dynamite was placed. What actually happened is that a shock wave from the dynamite, an instantaneous pressure spike on the order of 8 to 12,000 PSI, created a deflection in the valve, causing the upper stem to move away from the seat and the relief device was ruptured. But even though there was gas venting and a flash fire caused by a dynamite explosion, there was no ignition in the natural gas at any time. The cylinders contain the equivalent of approximately five and three quarter gallons of gasoline. And a comparison should be drawn here to the amount of time it would take for a gasoline fire to be extinguished. Whereas the natural gas simply vents safely into the atmosphere. Even if the natural gas had ignited, the only area that would have been affected would be on the periphery of the natural gas cloud. This is because 100% natural gas cannot burn. The next three tests subject the cylinders to the same explosive power, but at extreme low temperatures. These temperatures were created by packing the cylinders in dry ice for approximately eight hours, thus reducing their temperature to about 100 degrees below zero. The result is a drop in the pressure of the cylinder from 3,000 PSI to 1,100 PSI. These low temperature tests point to another advantage of these cylinders. Aluminum increases in both strength and ductility at low temperature. Whereas the embrittlement temperature of carbon steel is approximately minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit. This is particularly the concern for motor vehicles operating in northern latitudes, such as Edmonton and Alberta, Canada, and Alaska. And again, at a full stick and extreme low temperatures, the cylinders stayed intact and the gas did not vent. 
Another criteria by which these new cylinders are judged is performance under gunfire. How do they hold up under gunfire? And when they're pierced, how do they behave? The answer to the first question is that they are very difficult to pierce, as these first tests demonstrate. The bullets here are standard police issue loads, and each projectile will have a penetration of approximately 50% of the composite thickness, or less than one-eighth of an inch. The distance from the firearm to the cylinder was approximately 25 feet. There was no severe damage to the cylinder, other than damage to the composite matrix. There was no penetration of the metal. And even after this test, the cylinder performed well within its design limits. The cylinder exceeded the minimum burst pressure of 7,500 PSI. All cylinders were charged with natural gas. What is happening is the target and the bullet are basically exploding, but there is very, very little damage to the composite. A portion of the composite on the right-hand side of the screen can be seen to flip out and pull back in. However, the depth of the damage to the composite was again less than an eighth of an inch. The total thickness of the composite and the cylinder wall is over three quarters of an inch. The weapon used here, the AR-15, is a standard military assault rifle used by both the U.S. and NATO countries. The test involves a direct hit with armor-piercing projectile. The vent down was completely safe. There was no ignition of the natural gas, and it vented down in less than a minute. You may safely conclude from a review of these tests that even under the most severe conditions of high-speed collision, bonfire, dynamite, and gunfire, these new CNG cylinders performed safely and predictably. The service pressure of the cylinders, 3,000 PSI, was maintained under extreme abuse. There was no venting of the gas in most cases. The exceptions were the direct penetration gunfire tests, which were of course designed to penetrate the cylinders. While the bonfire tests were designed to specifically check safety valve performance. In all these tests, there is no fragmentation of the cylinders because the composite matrix completely encapsulates the metal shell of the cylinder itself. To the best of our knowledge, there has never been any cylinder ever built which has been subjected to the kinds of tests you've just seen. And once again, the basic reasons for these tests were to establish the total integrity and strength of these CNG fuel cylinders under the worst conditions as well as the overall safety of natural gas as a vehicular fuel.